Hello, my name is Screwball with Stay Burning, my friends, and you're watching the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 61. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Good evening, Norman. How are you? I don't know. You don't know? It's the eve of a revolution here, I'm sorry. Eve of a revolution, that is true. Who did you vote for? I can't vote. You did? You did? I saw you vote. Oh, yes. The incumbent. Hmm... We'll talk about that one later. We'll talk about that one later. So, um, moving on, we have a guest. This week's guest is rather special. He is a podcast host and he co-hosts the show with one Mandy Brony. Our guest for this week is Screwball. Hey, how's it going? Fine, thank you. Hi, Screwball. How are you? Pretty good. Kind of start of the day, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> uh, sorry for waking you up too early in the morning. Uh, this is this is a good time for me. <laughs> um, Everything is gonna be fine. That's what Twilight Sparkle said. <laughs> yeah, I just bust open up your front door and start singing. I hope your neighbors join in. <laughs> oh. No, I'm pretty sure my neighbors start shooting at me if that happens. <laughs> oh yeah, I I remember you you go hunting and oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, <laughs> Okay, anyway, so before we can start the show, we have to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is, who is your favorite pony? Fluttershy, definitely. That's interesting. Why Fluttershy? She's just adorable. She's a lot like me. Uh, uh, exclude the hunting part. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 I am an animal lover, um, and I, I'm... Before ponies, I was just like her. I was shy. I was, I was, uh, I'd rather just keep to myself and that sort of thing. And she sort of reminds me of how I was and how much I've changed ever since I got into My Little Pony. And, uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much why I love her so much. Is she's just the most, she's just, oh, she's so adorable. <laughs> okay, awesome, awesome. And what's your favorite episode? Favorite episode? I would... It, it, a lot of people will grind me on this one because normally you'd think I'll go for a Fluttershy episode, but there my no favorite is... Answers. actors. Don't worry. <laughs> there, there you go. There are no you allow multiple answers. choices if you can't make up your mind. <laughs> well, one that always sticks to me is uh, Family Appreciation Day. Uh, I, I I just love the, the whole... Um, uh, when Granny Smith brings up... Uh, uh, brings up the history of Ponyville and how it was created because of her and the Apple family, I almost cry every time. Uh, actually, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll say I do cry every time I see it because it's just it's just so heartwarming. It's 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 an amazing episode. That was a good one. A history lesson, yeah. And and funny enough, no Fluttershy in an episode. I know, and it's like people are like, what, what what's going on? Just You say you love Fluttershy, but then you, you're, and I'm like, you know what? Just like you say, there's no wrong answer. Yeah. Personally, for me, my favorite episode would be um, Lesson Zero. And Fluttershy's appearance in that... Oh, uh, backtrack here. My favorite pony is Fluttershy 2. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, going forward, my favorite episode is Lesson Zero. And in that episode, Fluttershy snaps a bear's neck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I could not stop laughing when I saw that. I, I, think... I, would, uh, I just took that clip from YouTube uh, of just that happening and not showing that she was rubbing his back. I'm like, hey, everyone, check this out. It's definitely not a kid's show. And then it shows her break the neck and then they're like, oh, did she actually kill it? I don't know. Watch it. <laughs> Watch it find out. Yeah, that's a good trailer. No, but that's, that's, a good, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, back then I didn't know who was my favorite pony because I, I kind of like Twilight, I kind of like Rarity, I kind of like Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy too. And then like, oh, who should I pick? And then that scene, that moment there, break Bear's neck. Okay, Fluttershy, you're my favorite. <laughs> but then, like, since we're all bringing up our favorite, I actually changed mine recently as well, just about last week. Your favorite pony or favorite episode? Episode. My favorite <laughs> pony will always be Pinkie Pie. Okay. But my favorite episode is now Double Rainbow. Oh, that's not canon. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> Wait, yeah, what, what is this? That, that is not canon. I was thinking for something like, huh, oh, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. It actually, I, I rewatched it twice this week because something about that, that that episode really appealed to me and 
that was one that actually made me tear up at the end when he used the Powerpuff Girls ending. <laughs> it was that shot uh, of it, nostalgia straight to the vein. <laughs> if, if you want, sorry, uh, you uh, if if you want one that really makes you tear up, you gotta watch Snowdrop because that just makes me cry every damn time I watch oh, that one. Yeah. <laughs> but but Snowdrop is kind of um formulaic where okay we do this and bam person's gonna cry ha 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 yeah like my little dashi in a sense mm, uh, it, makes, it makes people cry let's not talk about not for my the little... same reason but it makes <laughs> people cry let's not talk about my little dashi the, the last episode when we talk about my little dashi we give it a we, let's just say we give it a good whooping new stick <laughs> yeah um if, if you want to know, that's our April 1st episode. And um, in that episode, I compared My Little Dashi to Twilight. The vampire. Yep. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, uh, moving on to my third question. How did you become a brony? Uh, it was uh, my friend Skipsy. Um, what happened was, well, I used to work at a photo lab and... Uh, uh, I used to actually be a furry at the time, and um, what happened was uh, uh, Skipsy uh, comes into work, and he's like, "Yes, yeah, so I'm. Uh, so have you ever heard of My Little Pony?" And of course, like everyone is like, "Yeah, I've heard of it. Why do you ask?" And then he's like, "Well, I'm into it now." And I'm like, "Okay, good job." And then uh, I, I start like talking with other friends about it. I understand that he's a furry and all, but it's like this is a whole new level of crazy. And uh, he ended up, you know, pushing it on me. And then he, he says, you know what, why don't you just uh, go on ahead and watch it with me? So I'm like, okay, invite me over to your house sometime and we'll check it out. So the uh, very first episode we watched was actually uh, Ghostbusters with, uh, with Trixie. And uh, honestly, it almost sold me right then and there because uh, uh, when I heard Spike's voice played by Kathy Westluck... Um, I recognized it almost instantly, and it, but I was like, okay, I know that voice. I know I heard it many times before. I just don't know where. And then so we actually paused the episode and we started researching it. And then it turns out that she <laughs> was in like Dragon Ball Z. She was in Kid vs Cat in cartoons that I knew very much about. And and then I was like almost sold right there. I'm like, holy crap, this is so cool. And then it's like, yeah, it's actually Canadian made. I'm like, yep, yeah, sold. <laughs> Yay! That's a good episode, eh? Oh yeah, that's a good one. I like that one, though. And, and I'm glad that I started with that one first, and then after that one, we start watching them in order. And and uh, I just kept coming back for more. And uh, he tried doing it with uh, two of our other friends, Jeff and uh, Jeff and Logan, but they weren't as interested as I was. It's like it's like uh, let's watch the next episode. And like Ugh. and I'm like yes, next one. <laughs> and and uh, and uh, it, it, it was it was it was really good. I. Uh, I enjoyed the the very first time watching it, and then I uh, got on my iPod, and then I just could not stop, and then it just turned into a full blown addiction. <laughs> so welcome to the whole new level of crazy. Yeah, yep. yep. <laughs> the whole new level of crazy. Interestingly enough, um, you started with episode number six, right? seven, seven. Yeah, seven. you started with episode number seven, huh? Because yeah. Um, we had Osaka Jack on, and he asked us what was the perfect episode to introduce somebody to watch the show. And, well, my first answer was Sonic Rainbow. Because mm-hmm. it's full of action, it's full of, yay, stuff. Yeah. Basically, he said, nah, it's an okay answer, but his answer was a friend indeed. And um, uh, Yeah, that would be a good one. Also, uh, another good one would be... Uh Bridal gossip because the whole comedy in that one is just outstanding with <laughs> um, the whole of uh, uh, poison joke and that sort of deal. And we flutter shy. Oh, always oh, flutter yeah. shy. <laughs> uh, yes, that, that was that sold it for me there too. Yeah, true. I actually started with Call of the Cutie, so I don't know how would that work on other people. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of um, finding the best perfect episode to show someone new. Yeah, I know. As I said, I started with Call of the Cutie because for some reason. When I did a YouTube search, that was the first episode that turned up. Uh, I, I don't know. It's kind of a personal thing to ask, really, because each person has his own like and dislike. Like, if you ask me what's, my, what's the perfect episode to show somebody new, I'll say Sonic Rainboom because of the action scene and, yeah, and stuff. And Osaka Jack told me that it was an okay episode, but 
uh, per certain people don't won't understand why Rainbow Dash is like this and stuff. I mean, like, yeah. like Screwy here, he watched um, Ghostbusters first, and what caught him was not um, Trixie, was not Twilight, or was not the comedy. It was Spike. So any Spike episode would have actually done the trick. Not really. It really would have. Uh, true, true. Uh, that one I did really enjoy uh, getting to see a villain right off the... Well, I won't really say a villain, a more pro- of a villain mask, but, uh, but uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's, it definitely showed some conflict right then and there, and, and, it made, and it definitely caught my attention. So it, it, it was... Yeah, it was it, for me, it, it, it did the work for me, and I think it... Uh, I remember actually when I saw a picture even before I watched that episode. I remember seeing a, a picture that my friend had of Spike with a mustache and he's uh, twi- uh, like like curling it up with his fingers, or whatever. And uh, I remember he, I, I I actually remember how it, how why that one was picked first it was because I remember asking Skipsy, "Hey, do uh, do do there was a dragon that had this mustache or whatever?" Uh, what What's with that? And then he's like, "Oh, I, I, I know that. I'll, I'll show you that episode." So he, sh- that was the reason why that one was the first one. Huh. That, that's interesting. And wow, hmm. because of Spike, you became a brony. Huh. Yeah, I know. Which is odd. It's usually a pony that gets you involved, but it was Spike. <laughs> yep, Spike is best pony. <laughs> yeah, a valid answer. <laughs> <laughs> and funny enough, next week you'll be interviewing Cathy the West Luck. Oh my, what, I, I wonder oh, what you're going to talk yeah. to her about. That's the, okay, now this is an interview I've been looking forward to for a very long time. Uh, uh, that uh, that she's the one that, because of her voice and because of her is the reason I got into the show. And, now, and, and I don't just want to talk to her about that show, I also want to talk to her about like, definitely kid versus cat because not much people know about that show uh it sort of ha- it was sort of like tom and jerry except for it was about this kid named coop that was fighting this alien cat and it, it's it's just it was it was just so funny and uh and it it, it definitely kept my attention span to watching this because there's all every episode had something crazy and unique because <laughs> this kid this kid was i mean not the kid the cat was like a super genius so he would make all these weapons and all these all these ways of trying to kill coop and uh and then finally call in his alien forces and uh take over earth and uh <laughs> they they did they uh i liked it, it was from the, i believe it was from the same studio that brought milo pony so uh, I, I even if I watch it now, I can hear, uh, I can, I can, I can see the same, uh, the same I, style in a way. The, the, like they even use the same like soundboard and stuff. I can hear a squeeze sometimes, like uh, like when Fluttershy does uh, the whole smile and they hear wee that that, that noise. Uh, I hear it in in Kid vs Cat, and I'm like, yep. The, this this show is is just awesome. I just I just hope <laughs> Kathy. Oh, I hope Dustin brings it up with Kathy. If he does, then I'm totally am because <laughs> she, I just gotta thank her for for playing as Dennis in uh, Kid vs. Cat because oh oh it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean because with me, if I do get her on, I'm gonna talk about uh, Gundam with her because she plays a lot of Gundam roles. Yeah, I, I saw that. Uh, I, I was actually looking at a bunch of anime that she's done in the past, and uh, I got into that uh, Black Lagoon, and, oh, that one was amazing, too. <laughs> <laughs> and another one that she played that influenced my life is Shampoo from Ranma One Half. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've, seen, I've seen a couple episodes, but I never actually got into it because I was younger. and uh, That show is not a show for young kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Mid teens, yes. Young kids, no. <laughs> anyway, moving on to my last question is, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? My parents are in denial. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know really the extent of it. Uh, I don't think they would really ever actually under- understand it in any way. Uh, no matter how 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 I try to explain it, it, it they. I don't think they'll ever really get it. They know that I'm part of the show. They know that I do this every Mondays and stuff, but they don't know the extent of how popular it's become, uh, how, uh, why I'm going to these conventions, how much actually means to me. And, 
Um, I think the only way that I could ever get them to fully understand is if I got Dusty somehow down here and then he was to sit them down and tell them about it. Your parents any Star Trek fans? No. <laughs> Actually, just a curious question. Um, are they the same way towards you being a furry? When I was a furry, it actually lasted like maybe a year and a half, two years. It didn't last long at all, really. So they never it was, knew? Uh, they never really knew, no. Okay. Uh, I, did go, I did go to two conventions to it. But I never really told them the full story behind it. Um, okay. But uh, and then when I got into bronies or, or ponies and that sort of thing, it, it sort of uh, it outshined the furry fandom, and I found it to be a whole lot more enjoyable than the than it. And uh, it, it just it just piqued such an interest to me than it did for the furry fandom. When it comes to my friends, uh, when they that they know of it, it it's it's really hilarious because. Um, but I have a few friends that are into My Little Pony, but not a lot. Um, and all the other ones, they don't mind. They, 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 they even joke every now and again, or they even link me videos that they randomly come across, or, or that sort of thing. And they know that, that I like... That you already watched, like, about 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, that's probably already watched. And, <laughs> but I, I, I like to pretend that I'm like, oh, this is cool, this is awesome, double rainbow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, then there's people at work that are like, uh... I wear, like, my Rainbow Dash belt buckle um, and a pony shirt under my work shirt or stuff like that. And I remember when I went to uh, Los, uh, EQLA for the first time, uh, they did not really know why I was going. But there was, uh, there, then the word went out while I was there at work. They, 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 they started figuring out, hey, this guy is actually part of a radio show, and he actually interviews people on My Little Pony. And then they're like, what? What, what? And then so when I came back, I got barraged by constant questions. They're like, what? Well, why did you go to Los Angeles for this? What are, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, there's nothing wrong with me. It's a really good show. And, and uh, the, 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 they still joke about it every now and again. Um, uh, I think the most recent was I, I got late to, to a meeting, and uh, I, I come in, and it's like, oh, and today's going to be all sunshine and rainbows. And then Brad looks at me, and then he's like, yeah, uh, uh, Dan here definitely knows a thing or two about rainbows, and they all start laughing. It's like, rainbow, Dan! Yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome workplace. Awesome that happened workplace. to me in class a couple of weeks ago, because... We were t- we, I study advertising as my minor, and the lecturer was asking about things that we liked. And then she suddenly turned to me and like, Daniel, what do you like? And it was 8 in the morning, I wasn't functioning. And a guy at the back of the class, he likes ponies! <laughs> I had no idea what was going on. I was like, Daniel, you like horses? <laughs> and I was like, move on, move on. Let's not talk about this. It's too early for me, I'm drunk. <laughs> oh... Oh, but anyway, um, that was, that's a good story. Seriously, wow, workplace. Yep. The thing is, with your workplace, it's for shame. Why would they say, what's wrong with you with going? They should ask you... Don't ask who? why, ask why not. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. True that, and it's like, who did you get to talk to? It's not like, why did you go there to talk to people? <laughs> Actually, there was, there's one guy at work... Um, uh, he looked into some of the voice actors and stuff, and he found out that there was a whole lot of them that he loves from certain animes and stuff. And uh, he started telling other people about it. Like, you do realize that he's interviewing really awesome people. And then they actually start peaking interest, and they start actually asking, I was like, wait, you actually interview these, these actual, like, voice actors and actors and that sort of thing? I'm like, yeah. And when I interviewed uh, was Sam Vincent and, and Matt Hill, yeah. um, they, that's when it actually hit pretty hard for, for the guys at work because when they found out that uh, was Sam Vincent did uh, um, one of the Ninja Turtles in the uh, third movie uh, one, one, of, one of the other work uh, workers is actually a huge Ninja Turtles fan and when he found that out he just went fan crazy he's like what you actually got to interview one of the Ninja Turtles and I'm like yeah it, it was actually pretty awesome and and uh, and then that's when everyone started talking about it, and that's when they all realized, hey, wow, he's he's actually making something out of this. <laughs> well, don't don't you dare say, pony, don't give something back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so anyway, let's move on to our next topic, and our next topic is housekeeping. Recently, we did a poll on our Facebook page. We asked, who is the best princess? 
and the candidates were Princess Celestia, Princess Luna, Princess Cadence, and Princess Twilight Sparkle. And the winner for Best Princess was none other than Princess Luna. Just to compare or just tell you who won how many votes, um, Princess Celestia got 10 votes, Princess Luna got 21 votes, Princess Cadence got 3, and Princess Twilight Sparkle got 6. Yay! Yes, Tetra of- Pony, I'm Luna. looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Luna is always number one choice in our in our show. <laughs> true, true. Luna, everybody loves the Luna Pony. Uh, I, I should I should just change that. Instead of 21, I'm going to change it to 22 because Screwball likes Luna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, Twilight Sparkle got six votes. Huh. We got troll. Really? By who? I'm just kidding. I don't know. Why is someone who vote Twilight? <laughs> hey, she's a princess. And for some people, she is best pony, even with the upgrades. <laughs> Upgrade that she still can't put away. Hey, some people love to show off their new swag. And for Twilight, <laughs> it's the wings. A princess should know better. Oh, so says Celestia. <laughs> of course. Anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. In today's news time, ponies listed as six newly sexualized kids' toys from the 80s? In a recent article on Yahoo Parenting, they have listed down six newly sexualized kids' toys from the 80s, and My Little Pony was included in one of them. It started with Jesse Nadler, the writer for the article, reading that the board game Candyland has gotten a makeover. In the recent makeover, some of the iconic characters were too sexy. She listed down six toy characters from the 80s that have gotten the sexy makeover. Those characters are Candyland, Queen Frosting. Frosting? Frosty? I have no idea how to pronounce that. Screwball? Frostine? I don't even know. <laughs> oh, okay. I never heard of this queen. Okay, okay moving on. Uh, Candyland, Princess Lolly, uh, My Little Pony, G.I. Joe, Malibu Ken, and Exercise Barbie. The quote she used for My Little Pony was, The first generation of My Pretty Ponies were plump and rather heavy, not so in the 2013. The sleek and sexy pony look primed to prance around the stripper pole at the nearest jockey club. Links can oh, be found God. in the show notes. This so, is what puberty does to you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know... What is her reasoning? Because... Uh, I don't think there's a reasoning. I think it's just them trying to bring up something that would make the parents go, hey, this maybe is my thing for the kids. I'm not gonna... I'm gonna avoid this or never. And they're, they're just trying to bring up news because as the saying goes, no news is good news. Yeah, true. And, okay, I have to say about the Malibu Ken, there's a total change from the original Ken and the new Ken. And, I don't know, for me, the new can is okay, but the old can reminds me of Toy Story 3. Yeah. Yeah. And Exercise Barbie, the, the other thing is, the newer Exercise Barbie looks tame than the old one. <laughs> yeah. Just Just imagine this. She's wearing sport tracks, a uh, tank top or something like that, and the old one, she's wearing spandex. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I I think the tank top. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I mean, like, a uh, different stroke for different people. But I don't know. Most of the updates here, like um, for Candyland, I, I, it's basically moving on with time. As time goes on, people's interests change. Yeah, um, the interest in aesthetics <laughs> and stuff like that does go with the times. Yeah, true. And my pretty pony. The the thing with that one is, um. I, how do I put this? It is a redesign because in G three we had the chibi, the chibi ponies, and oh god, those so god awful. <laughs> and then came baby chibi, which oh. we tried to save, and eventually just crashed into the mountains, God knows where. Yeah, <laughs> true. And GI Joe, um, that's a strange one. The picture she used was a, the real original GI Joe toys without any of the cartoon characters, and. Uh-huh. The one she compared it to was Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> oh, of course. Uh, yeah. I mean, you bring in a WWE kid who's got muscles bigger than those that I'll ever have. It's like, 
you're cre- you're creating something that is obviously appealing to some other audience than just kids because kids aren't interested in bodybuilding. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, the toys and the thing, the her reasoning for picking those toys, I find it poppycock. Yeah. Yeah, because GI Joes, GI Joes are just toys. Like, okay, um, she's comparing how sexy they are now. Obviously, you pick Dwayne Johnson. Of course, he's going to be looking sexy. Hey, hey. <laughs> well, and, that's the internet for you. Yeah, and I've uh, never trusted Yahoo News much, but well. Yeah, true that. And talking about um, dancing stripper pole, um, there's a funny picture in the show notes. Please go look at it because it's um, related. <laughs> it's, it's safe for work. We pinky promise. Yeah. Yeah. Fly away now. Fly away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so, goodness. Anyway, Dan, why did you take this one? Yeah, okay, Norman. Now, Pony Cart Sleeve and Playmat, there's a preview right here in a recent retailer event in Canada, where Screwball's from, mm. and to play in association with Ultra Pro showcase mock-ups of their Cart Sleeves and Playmat. There's no other information given to when these products will be available for sale, but links and pictures are provided in the show notes. These look gorgeous. Go take a look. And guys, what do you all think about this one? Am I the only one that's playing card games? If you count... <laughs> Texas Hold'em, then I play card games. Uh, no, so oh, so guess it's only me then. I was uh, trying to save you. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the playmat design and sleeves, interestingly enough, the sleeve that they're, they're promoting or previewing here is the same design as the box for the trading cards. You have one, right, Screwball? Uh, I actually have a few, yes. And uh, actually, I was, I was looking at the Fluttershy one. And uh, it actually kind of reminded me a bit. Uh, and then I'm like, you know what? Uh, that, that picture alone looks familiar. And then I realized that the style really is very similar with the other ones. Yeah, and the uh, vinyl is the same as my box from Enterplay, the trading card set thing that I don't know what the name is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know, I mean, for... And the Pinkie Pie one looks like the box from Hot Topic. Uh, yeah, that's what I say. It's the All three of these are come, comes from the box set. Uh, no, I want to say oh, okay. box set, but the box that you buy Merch. with the exclusive cards and stuff, yeah. Yay, body stock vectors. Yay. But still, the, the playmat looks good. I like the redesign, and who knows? Um, if you play card games, this would be a really good purchase. I know I'm going to buy it. Actually, I would like to know a little bit more about the playmat. I'm not so sure how card games work, so do enlighten me. I thought playmats come with squares to put cards and stuff. That's stock playmats because when you play something like Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! or any other card game that's out there, they usually want to tell the people where do you put your cards. And usually this kind of playmats is open for any card game. Oh, I see. So it's just like a nice conducive material to play? Yeah, it's a rubber mat below so it won't move around and the material on top is really good so your card won't get scratched or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, but let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic, possible Nurse Red Heart toy coming soon? Over on Taobao, a random Nurse Red Heart pony toy has popped up. The toy in question is 5.5 centimeters in size, equivalent to the size of a blind bag figure. Could this possibly be a part of a new pony set? Links and pictures can be found in the show notes. So guys, what do you think? A Nurse Red Heart blind bag figure? Adorable. (laughs) <laughs> she looks a little bit off of the stock mold, but I like this. I would... Mm, mm, yeah, I think so. You, you could she looks s- like she's leaning forward. Mm, yeah, tr- true that. I, I don't know. If you look at it, it could be... In the words of people that always say this, drop off the truck from China. Oh, yes. Yeah. But still, um, I can't wait because Nurse Redheart looks really good. But is her main pink or light pink? I don't really remember. I think it was pink. Really? Yeah, not? it was. It definitely yes, it was. Hmm. Oh, okay. I know the pony who threw Pinkie Pie out of the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Applejack? <laughs> no. But being thrown out of the hospital is on my bucket list now. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is light pink. Yeah, but still, I-, I can't wait because usually when they come up with blind bags or a set of three blind bags, there's always going to be another extra one more custom. Yep. 
And I'm sure our <laughs> other co-host who can't join us tonight, Charlie, is going to fall in love with this one. Yep. By the way, Charlie is a doctor. <laughs> yep. And I don't mean a Time Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, actually. Oh, who knows? Anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. And in today's guest time, we have Screwball from Stay Brony, my friends. How are you, Screwball? I'm still doing really good. I'm enjoying this so far, that's for sure. Uh, that's awesome to hear. So you're having fun and, and um, not regretting coming on? Oh, I'm, I'm having tons of fun. Honestly, this beats yard work any day. <laughs> Yay, yard work. What's that? <laughs> so, Screwball, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Uh, I am the uh, co-host slash IRC moderator with uh, on the show Stay Brony My Friends with the manliest brony in the world, uh, Dusty Cat. I bring in the questions when uh, after we interview a certain guest uh, and uh, later on in the show, the live studio audience will, will, uh, will message me questions. I read all them, bring out the crazies, make sure there's none of those, you know, really creepy questions. And uh, I read them, out, read out the good ones for the guest to answer. So awesome. So my first question is going to be, how did you get involved? So uh, how, I, how I started was, uh, well, uh, Skipsy, uh, way back when it was called Every Free Radio, um, what happened, uh, well, when Skipsy was the artist for, for the program at the time, I used to always go over to his house, and I always hear him on Mumble with a bunch of these people I do not know, such as, like, uh, a track One Trick, uh, Final Draft, and there was just all these people that just were always in this chat. So I, um, I, I just thought, okay, this is, this is pretty interesting. Uh, I, uh, I never heard of this radio show before, but so I started tuning in on their episodes and whatnot. And then, uh, I came to, uh, them almost being like, uh, um, uh, <laughs> uh, brony celebrities so I wanted to get involved in some way or form and I kept begging to Skipsy just give me the mumble uh, contact and everything and then I can join in and finally he broke and decided to give it to me um, uh, what happened was this actually kind of goes in the story of how I got my nickname and how I actually first started into it was uh, they needed a little uh, uh, commercial, I guess you could say, for Everfree Radio. And um, uh, what happened was me and Skipsy were just uh, fooling around, doing our, our weird English accents, um, uh, going, how, how are your biscuits today? Oh, they're very well. And we started doing that, like, like all the time. And then Final Draft couldn't stop laughing. So he's like, you know what, I'm recording this, and I'm going to uh, make it a dumb commercial. So he did that. And then that's when Final Draft gave me the name Screwball because I kept going bruh, 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 all the damn time. And uh, and uh, after that, uh, I sort of, uh, sort of gained a relationship into Air Free Radio. And I started gaming with them. I started being in their mumble chat, chats more often. And it wasn't until they actually needed people involved in the program. They needed uh, uh, someone to do some audio editing. So I said, you know what, I'm up, I can help audio edit. So 8-Track gave me the training, and I started doing audio editing. My very first one was actually, uh, I believe it was the Beatle Bronies when they were first interviewed by Everfree Radio. And that was the first time I've ever audio edited, and then since then I just kept doing it. But it wasn't until one fateful day when uh, uh, Dusty uh, popped into the mumble, um, and I went fan crazy because I've seen his stuff before. I've seen the manliest brony in the world in some of his videos. And I'm like, holy, holy cow, that's dusty. And, uh, and, uh, I got to have a chat with him and I don't know what kind of impression I made on him, but next, uh, next bit, he actually, uh, comes up to me. He's like, you know what? I'm actually, uh, uh now have a new show with Everfree Radio, I was wondering if maybe you'd like to be my uh, co-host and bring in questions from the live audience. And I just went fan crazy. I just instantly said, yes, I'd love to. And ever since then, I've been uh, full-time staff with Everfree, Ra <laughs> Everfree Network now. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how I got into it. 
Wow, that's a long journey there. <laughs> yeah, well, it was like a year's journey. <laughs> I was going to ask you, how did you join Dusty? But oh, okay, that's, um, question already answered. That, that, that puts it together right there. <laughs> Oh, cool. So you, you said that you do audio editing for EFN or EFR back then. So do you still do it now? I don't, actually. Oh. Um, if if there's ever any problems, if there's ever something that end up coming up that, like, maybe if Cowboy Dave or, or someone uh, just can't get to audio editing, I would be the guy to go to. Or if... Usually, Oatmeal does it nowadays. He kind of took my job back then, and he, and he, I believe he still does it now. So whenever there's an interview, there's usually him that does it in the background. But, uh, uh, yeah, um, the last time I've done an audio edit was actually when we did that one episode where Screwball, me, was uh, kidnapped by Nightmare Moon. Oh. Uh, I I had to, right after show, I had to do the editing on that one, and that was... That took me to like, what was it, four in the morning to get done? It was insane. Wow, you did that because I, I remember hearing that one and wow, it sounds really awesome. Yeah, it, 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 uh, a lot of people were really impressed by how I did it. Uh, it uh, I wanted it to be like a uh, like way back in the day when we did not have uh, uh, video, we did not have TV and stuff that people would listen to their quote-unquote movies uh, through radio, and I want to give that impression of you just had to close your eyes and you just had to imagine what was going on. So I went through the sound library. I picked out as much stuff as I can from avalanche noises to to uh, uh, some some uh, uh, sound noises from uh, the Three Stooges. I went full out on this one, and uh, a lot of people said I did a really good job at it. And I I know what uh, I I know what you go through because I go through this every week and audio editing, it's no fun when you are not it's hard yeah <laughs> it is hard and especially in your case adding in sound effect adding in background music ay 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 let's just say that I I totally I respect what you do <laughs> yeah I respect what you do too it's it's a it's a hard job that someone has to get done so why not us. <laughs> And Norman does a really good job with it. Oh. Awesome. Because sometimes I, I can talk on and on and on and derp like nobody's business. And sometimes, you know, tongue slips and I start cursing. That's why we don't go live. <laughs> we should. It'll be funny. And people will just say, Dan, shame on you. Yeah, I'll be in jail. Uh, <laughs> the the pony police are going to put you in jail for saying a bad word. Uh, the pol- pony police will put me in jail and the Malaysian police will put me in jail for other things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, oh no, no, that's oh, not, no. that's not good. That's not good. So anyway, Dan, you got any questions? Actually, yes, I do. So first of all, why screwball? Like I said before, it was originally when uh, when I kept doing that uh, blah, 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 that that noise because when you see screwball float by the screen, you see her uh, look at the screen for about a second, and then she turns and then she just starts doing that thing with her lips it's like blah, 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 blah. it's really awkward to do but uh, when I started doing that for that commercial for Air Free Radio uh, I don't know why but Final Draft really loves giving people nicknames whenever if there's someone that has a <laughs> normal like I was originally just called Tony Coos at the time and he's like you know what that, that name is just awful it just does not ring in any way or form and when we did that commercial uh, then he's like you know what screwball that fits you so well and i'm like okay after the background pony you know what why not i'll go for it and it just stuck since then and uh i don't know why but it's like dusty uh when dusty brought me into the show it, my name was just screwball i wasn't actually tying myself in with the pony in any way or form that was just my nickname but then when dusty brought me into the show he just he it just rained to him he just thought it was the coolest thing ever it's like screwball the the uh, sidekick, the uh, the co-host, it, the it, 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 yeah, the assistant. It just seemed to ring with him, and then so he tied me in with uh, with the pony, and and it's it's gone so I've gone so used to it that it's like I can uh, it, as dumb as it's gonna sound, I consider her to be a part of me, uh, and and it's like whenever I see her, I, I just think of myself in some stupid way or form, and. Uh, <laughs> And it's it, it it just stuck, and uh, and I love getting in like fan art and fan uh, animations and that sort of thing. That 
uh, shows to Screwball, and even though anyone else that doesn't know about the show would just see that and think, uh, think of the OC Pony, there's other people that would look at that picture or look at that fan art or something and be like, that was actually for Screwball with uh, Stay Brony, my friends, and it just, it's, it's, it's different. I don't even know how, to, I, I can't even begin to describe. Like when uh, you see Screwball with Overhaul, then you know that, oh, okay, that's the Screwball that they're talking about. That's the screwball that they're talking about. It's almost like that. There's it's just two different screwballs. There's screwball, which is as the fandom would call it, uh, Discord's daughter, and then there's the screwball with Stay Brony, my friends. So <laughs> it's like two different entities. <laughs> I remember first time I watched uh, Stay Brony, my friends. It was actually with an episode with uh, We'll Draw for Food One. That guy, what's his name? I forgot. But uh, yeah, first time I saw it, it's like uh, I have screwball over here, and I'm like what? <laughs> and the vector appeared on the screen, and I'm like, oh. Okay, that's cute. <laughs> and I was totally lost for a moment in what was going on. Uh, talking about Dusty and your guests, could you explain to us how does your show format works? Uh, like how we get the uh, guests and that sort of stuff? No, not really. It's after you get the guests and how the show flows. Because I've been listening to Stay Borny and my friends for a while and I noticed there's a format change because way back when you had this um, flow of guests now you have this flow of guests and back then you didn't have charity and now you do so mind telling us a few things about that oh there's there's always change and honestly this is probably the best change we've ever done was Brendan and uh, charities and stuff when Dusty and Carolyn uh, originally thought of the idea was to was to bring in charities and uh, and to get the guests to pick their charity out and allow the audience to donate money to that certain charity is probably one of the most genius ideas I've ever heard, and uh, it, it's it's definitely changed the show. And then we start bringing like even before then we start bringing out the website, we start bringing out all sorts of uh, all sorts of different. Uh, stuff and then it's like wow this this show has really changed i remember even like if i go back to like the earlier episodes like like two and five that sort of thing i can see the change myself i can see even the change in me alone i i used to be so unorganized i i used to it used to be just a a, a cluster fudge just every time i go back to the early episodes i just face palm like crazy i'm like whoa 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 I Why think would... every podcaster has that moment, you know, oh. you go back and listen to the history and like, Why did I say that? Why did I do this? Why did I do that? Ah. <laughs> it, it, it's, uh, as, as time was, well, goes along, if we made a mistake, we learn from the mistake. And and uh, then we then uh, when we start bringing in the VA guests, that's when it's really started to change. We start bringing in like... Uh, uh, our very first guest was uh, Lee Tokar as the first VA. That day, I was just tripping. I was just like, "Oh my goodness, this is this is very nerve wracking. I'm very nervous." And then we start bringing in more and more, and then I just I just started to go along with it, and I started to realize, you know what? We're we're actually getting really huge now. When these VAs started uh, coming into our show, uh, then that I think that was when the turning point really started to show. It's been such an experience. Um, I can understand because starting with how you begin the show, it's like, huh, we're talking to this set of people and, oh, it's just like a normal conversation with people. And then when celebrity came in, oh, um, I need to show more professionalism. And then more and more came in and then like you just move with the flow. Yeah, it, it, that's that's really exactly how, how it is. Uh, when when we realize when we start bringing the VAs, we we realize we need to uh, step it like up. You said, be more professional. We need to uh, we need to be as organized as we possibly can to make it a awesome experience for everyone. And then when we brought in the charities and stuff, that that was like a huge peak right there. That's when uh, it it really started to change for the good. That's for darn sure. I have to say, your show is really interesting. I think you're the first show on EFN that does charity work. I've listened to other shows on EFN and they don't do what you do. Like, call in guests and do charities and stuff. And honestly speaking, I'm a bit jealous now because if I come on, I I won't bring in any money and people won't do any donations. So, ah! (laughs) (laughs) Oh! I didn't know how to begin to describe. Uh, it's 
it's it's it's it's it's a great thing that we that we've been doing uh, to bring in uh, to bring in money from the viewers that that the, there's so many generous people that have been donating towards that certain cause and how awesome the guests are to actually choose a charity uh, and 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 even get involved with like uh, like the uh, like uh, with the the draws and stuff like that like I love that idea too that when you when you when you donate to the charity you actually uh, get put into a draw to get certain amazing prizes. Like, even the even some of the guests, like, uh, 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 I remember shoot. Andrew Francis, he, he was to sign a picture, right? Andrew? Yeah, the, like, even the VAs and the writers and, and, and many of the other guests, they, they, they love to give away autographs and give away, like, even, like, scripts and stuff, uh, uh, like some of the writers have done, they, they actually gave us scripts or gave us songs or or something like that that a fan would just go crazy on wanting, and they're like, you know what? Here you go. Uh, since you uh, since you picked our charity, here you go. We can uh, we we can put this into the draw. And honestly, that's probably one of the biggest attention grabbers for our charity is when people get put into the draw and they get awesome, amazing prizes. And we even get donations from viewers. That will that actually donate pony merchandise and stuff to us, and they and they'd be like, hey, put the, put this stuff into the auction and uh, and uh, I mean not in the auction in the uh, in the in the draw and uh, and for for the charity and it, we're just like you know what this is awesome that that you guys would not only donate your money but you would also donate valuable items uh, to us that that is truly amazing. Yeah, I have to say, like, it's kind of a motivation to donate because you get your name into a draw. But, like people say, every cent counts. Yes, definitely. So, besides the charity and interviewing thing, um, where do you see the show going in the future? Hmm, that's a good question. I think it will go as long as the show goes on and maybe even further than that. Uh, I, as I can see, there's definitely already a season four coming out, so we're definitely going to be exceeding with that. So I say we even got definitely more than a year more to go. Like we all know, the show will end up coming to an end, and I honestly believe the fandom will continue to fr- to, to thrive because, as Final Draft put it one day, a lot of people care more for the fandom than they do for the show nowadays. Mm, true that, true that. And the way I see it now, with your show in particular, it's kind of, okay, I- even if My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic ends, the show will still go on. But it will maybe carry on a different name or whatever. But still, the personality, the people, the cause is still there. It's not going to change. And the Ever Free Network was set up on a very, very, you know, substantial ground it's such a it's such a labor of love for a fandom i don't think just because the show's going out the window that it's going to follow suit exactly and the friends that we've all gained thanks to this fandom uh i've i've had more friends than ever could ever think of thanks to this fandom and uh it's it's because that friendship and bond that we've all gained from this fandom that that's the reason why bronies will continue to live on even after the show ends True, true. And Great. to me, I see how this show or bronies are going to follow in the future. Is It's going to be something like Star Trek or Star Wars, where even after a few years into the future, there's still fans. There's still going to be some kind of convention going on. Even not, not as big as now, but it's still a little convention where people meet and greet, talk about Ponies, and what was your favorite episode? Oh, my favorite episode was from season four, episode five, blah, 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 blah. And that the fan labor is a massive, massive universe. And I don't know to what extent this is true, but I think the MLP uh, fan labor universe is the most, fa- the, the one that has expanded the fastest in almost all the fandoms of this century. Mm, true that, true that. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think really that, uh, that this fandom has changed so many people's lives, even for a much greater good. Like, honestly, the best success story I've ever seen ever would have to be one of my 
true awesome friends, Mando Pony. Uh, like it's because of the fandom and and getting tied in with with the actual show that it, it's given him like an awesome singing career. He's actually got to sing for Lilith's Pet Shop for goodness' sake. Like that's. That for me would be a, a sure plus to put on your resume and to, and to say, "Hey, I'm a singer," and the, and honestly, he is an amazing singer. Uh, out of all the Brony artists out there, he is my most favorite. He is is just such a talented guy. He is amazing to hang with, and and every convention I go to, when he's there, I'm just so damn excited. I'll be like, "Ah, oh, Mando's going! Yes, I cannot wait to see him again." Because that, that man is just the coolest guy ever. Like, he is an awesome friend, and it's just insane how how uh, how a fandom can change someone's life like that. And honestly, it's even changed my life uh, in such a huge way, and I'm sure it has for pretty much everyone that's ever been involved in some way or form. True that, true that. Um, especially with uh, musicians, like, um, just look at some of the really talented musicians out there like LXS or um, Aviators. Silver Hound. Yeah, I mean, um, who was that guy? LXS, right? Um, LXS. LXS, yep, yep. yeah. LXS. I want to share my birthday on the exact same day. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> like LXS. He's a prominent brony musician but somehow left the brony musician to create his own thing and he brought along some fans of his. Like you say, Mendo, he did a song for Pet Shop and I heard the song and it was pretty awesome. Oh uh, yeah, with the with the quilts and stuff. Oh, that, yeah. that was so catchy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, but um, moving on, um, talking about conventions, um, I'm jealous of you. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. Yeah. Like, we've always dreamed of going to a pony convention. We just haven't had the chance to. Indeed, all the funds. But but um, forget about us. Where are you going? Any conventions that you're going? Yes, I'm going to a few, actually. Um, there will be EQLA, which is actually really shortly. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm actually going to be flying out in four days. <laughs> wow. <laughs> which is which is nuts. Uh, I cannot believe how close it is. And then there's going to be Everfree Northwest, and then there's going to be BronyCon. So uh, I cannot wait for, for them. They're going to be, oh, tons of fun. Oh, Screwballs nice. U.S. tour. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Oh. A, lot of people, a lot of people have been asking me to go to the uh, Brony Can in the, uh, where was it? Somewhere in Vancouver. And I really would love, like, honestly, it's like the Canadian Brony going to a Canadian convention. What 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 better way? But it's just, you know, money and funds and traveling. I'm not sure yet. I want to go to that one because it's in one of my most favorite Canadian towns ever. Uh, but I'm not sure yet. But that would be... A really fun one to try out because really it's like next door to where they make My Little Pony. What better place than there? Yeah. Oh man, you I've always dreamed of going to Vancouver. I mean, from what I hear, it's an amazing place. Oh, it is. It's it's like right at the ocean. It's oh, it's just so beautiful. I love it there. Yes. Now I heard it from a Canadian. What? <laughs> yeah. What? what? I, I don't get it. Because every time some every time I tell people Vancouver sounds beautiful, it's like speak when you get there, Daniel. And now I said even the Canadians say so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. No, but seriously, if you can screwball, please do go because all the Canadian fans or your friends or fans really, it's like a Malaysian not going to a convention in Malaysia. What a waste! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, bring the Dusty with you. That'll be extra fun. Oh, uh, yeah, if, if Dusty was to go, you know what, I would be sold. I would be going. Uh, that yeah. would be a blast. I'm like, welcome to my country. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if, if I remember right, um, he, if, he, if, I, sorry, uh, if I remember right, he said if he were going to go to Brony Can, he'll be riding, right? Yeah, he, he would definitely be riding his bike down there, uh, which, wow. which would be pretty awesome. Wow. I'd probably I'd probably drive as well. Uh, I love oh my goodness I love the mountains. The, like, uh, the, the it's it would be such an amazing place to live at. But the only problem is their taxes and their expense to live there. It's it's awfully expensive to live there. But 
And uh, but it, honestly, if I had the money and the time, I would go without question because it's just that amazing of a place. You can park like probably further down and then ride into the hall on Dusty Spike as a pillion rider. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that would be like, Dave Brody, my friends is here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. <laughs> but, but Screwball, uh, how far is it from your place to Vancouver? How far mm. of a drive that is? Actually, quite a while. Uh, I'm actually in Alberta, and it's sort of, I'm like right next to the Saskatchewan border, um, so I have to go across all of Alberta. And then all of British Columbia to get to the end. That's roughly a good full day drive. Oh, my. Right. Google Maps, that's over 900, actually almost 1,000 kilometers. Okay, I could do the math here. Um, two, uh, 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 two, two for, that's roughly maybe 8 to, nah, maybe 10 to 15 hours of driving. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's no fun. <laughs> I've, I've drove even farther than that. I've drove to uh, uh, San Francisco, which was a good two-day drive. Whoa. I drove, wow. drove to Seattle twice. Uh, it's it's an uh, it's, it's experience. <laughs> you can drive up and down Malaysia three times and not top that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thing is with Malaysians, um, the furthest we can go is from south to north and that's how how far then that's about 600 i think that's even less than that yeah and the furthest if i were to say if i were to drive from the south where i am now to the capital where dan is it'll take about 300 kilometers and to it'll take me like five hour drive and to me that's long oh and i'm complaining but you (laughs) oh my uh um, I mean, he's, he's never. I, I don't know if you've driven up Norman, but we drove down there to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, I, can, I, I can even do a 250 kilometer easily because that goes to Edmonton, uh, and that's like I don't know, roughly a two hour f- uh, drive for two and a half hour drive for us. So uh, when it comes to us Canadians, we, we don't we don't we don't complain about travel. We actually. Uh, if 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 there's something on the other end, we might, we we'll 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 drive there and we'll take it. There's no questions asked. <laughs> you, you you know honestly, I, I think it's um, your road. They're much better than ours, and you have beautiful scenery. We don't. <laughs> and also, the drivers there are polite. Not like you. <laughs> <laughs> the Saskatchewan drivers, though, they're kind of nuts. I'll give you that one. Oh. Those guys. <laughs> Let's just say there's crazy drivers all around the world. Yeah, there's always that particular driver. True, true. Dan, any more questions? So, um, you do some audio editing, right, Screwball? Yep. So what's your weapon of choice? Uh, audacity right at the moment. Yay! I have a feeling. <laughs> audacity rocks. <laughs> well, no, Audacity, even though it's free, even though it's limited, it works perfectly. Yeah, it's... Until it crashes. And tough crashes. I can handle it. Uh, I've not any crashing yet, but uh, uh, I know another good one would be Sony Vegas as well. For audio? Yeah. Yeah, you can actually do audio with Sony Vegas. Uh, I know Cowboy Dave, I believe, actually uses that for his, so. Yeah. Um, my school syllabus uses Sony Vegas too. Nice. My school uses uh, Pro Tools 8, which I can't understand anything of, so I just press record and I export it into Audacity. Yeah, I, I actually used to, I used to have a Sony Vegas Pro 8, and oh, I loved fooling around that thing because I did not understand a single <laughs> of works. Uh, I, I just fooled around with them, like, hey, look at this, watch what I can do, and then the screen would flip and I would just feel so impressed. <laughs> Yay! Gee, what does this button do? <laughs> oh, boy. So much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love doing audio editing uh, back when I was uh, playing, like, uh, video games and stuff. I loved to uh, f- um, just film me playing around and stuff, and now just do editing and then show one of my friends, and, and we always had a good time with it, so... Okay, so um, moving on to the non-serious off-topic questions. What's your favorite video game? Favorite video game? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, 
Uh, there's so many. Um, I actually just played some Uncharted 2 for the PS3. I went nuts. I actually, I, I, I spent almost the entire day playing that one, and I played it. I played it from start to finish in one day, and I'm like, you know what? I feel like a nerd. What is this? <laughs> um, uh, other ones. I really love the Dead Space series. I'm a huge Dead Space fan. Uh, me and my friend Logan, we, we, we would, we just always talk about Dead Space. Um, we love the storyline. A lot of people think that, you know, a horror game's not going to have much to it other than jump scares and gore and violence, that sort of thing. But this, the Dead Space has such an intense uh, storyline. I could go into that for forever and ever. Um, so Uncharted, the Uncharted trilogy and the Dead Space trilogy are probably one of my most favorites. Um, I'll, I'll go by console-wise. PS3, Uncharted, Uncharted series, Xbox, uh, Dead Space, and now when it comes to computer, Gary's Mod is my most favorite. <laughs> okay, Gary's Mod. <laughs> oh. Oh boy, Gary's Mod. I, I know of it, but I haven't played it at all. And Uncharted for me, it's too scary. <laughs> you should play Uncharted with me. <laughs> oh. Dude, De- you should try Dead Space. Oh my goodness, that game gave me nightmares. Like, that, that <laughs> game is just out of this world. Um, I, I've already I, successfully desensitized three people from both Uncharted and Dead Space. <laughs> I think I should start a business. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, scribble. Uh, if you want to try something new, play Tomb Raider, the new one. I'm playing that right now, and it's fun. I've been hearing it's really good, and uh, I'm thinking about actually getting that one. I was I was thinking about it for a while, and then when uh, what was it, Bioshock came out, I tried that one. I didn't mind it. The storyline was was pretty darn good, but it has terrible playback value. It's mm. like you can play it through once and then it's like ah, I don't need to play it again. I already know everything that's going to happen. So Yeah, I, I heard a lot of people say that um, you, you, there's multiple choices in the game but it doesn't really matter. Whatever you pick is still going to end up the same end. All roads yeah. home. Yeah. Uh, no, but... uh, actually, one other game that I love for multiple choice and that actually affects what you do. Uh, also, one of my top favorite games Ace is... Attorney. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's a good one, though. Uh, Objection! <laughs> yep. But, uh, uh, it would be, uh, Fall of New Vegas. I really love that one. Ah. Really? Fall of New Vegas? I thought. I, I, I've played through that one six times now. Wow. Because it just has amazing playback value. I love. I don't know why, why I love it so much, but I love to just take a melee weapon and there's like hundreds of guards shooting me with guns and I would just run up to him with this, this sledgehammer and just start beating <laughs> it. I'm like, you know what, you may get, have guns, but I'm just too mad. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Me- melee weapon is always hardcore. Dusty's but- rubbing off on you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh, when Dusty played Fall of the Vegas, it was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> he just like he makes the character look just like him, and then he, uh, he sneak up, put a grenade in someone's pocket, and run away. And I'm like, good job, Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, screwball. Um, you brought up Fallout New Vegas. The obvious question here is: Have you read? Fallout the New- most epic fanfic ever. Yeah. Fallout Equestria? Yeah, Fallout Equestria. Have you read that one? I haven't. Oh. <laughs> but a lot of people have asked that because they know I'm a Fallout fan, but I have not actually read uh, uh, Fallout Equestria. I've heard uh, much about it, and I hear that it is good, but people have uh, mixed opinions. Some people say uh, that those who are hardcore or into the game might not like it as much as those who haven't really done much of the Fallout series, I don't, I don't know what to say. Um, uh, I would love to try getting into it, but uh, you know, I've just been busy and stuff. And honestly, fanfics aren't really my thing. I've read a couple fanfics, but I, I haven't really got into it. I've actually read a few myself, but I rarely ever put them into public. Oh. My one friend. Uh, Eric, he he loves writing stories. He l- just loves writing fanfics for any any video game, any series he likes. He even likes to uh, combine them into one crazy, awesome fanfic. And uh, one day he actually asked me if I could make a, a fan a, 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 a story of some sort. And I haven't done it in years, not since like grade uh, I don't know, I have to go seven many years ago. And uh, I thought, you know what, I could give it a go. So I made my first My Little Pony fic, 
And when I made the first one, uh, I told him that it, it, it's not going to tie in with any other stories that I wrote, that I wrote in the past, but then it turns out that it was, and mm. then it just turned, and then my friend ended up becoming like a huge fan of my series and uh, I, I, I'll never release them in the public, though, because they're just too damn embarrassing. <laughs> oh, but, man. Uh, you said it, now you have to release it, because I'm curious, what the hell do you write? <laughs> How it goes was, there was a police officer that, I, I kind of tied it in like Walking Dead in a way. Police officer goes into a coma, and he wakes up to find... Not really a plague, but something has happened, and there's no one left. Everyone's basically dead, and people are like, it's just like Walking Dead. And then it turns out that Discord uh, is sort of uh, taking over our world kind of thing. And and what people thought as a plague of your skin turning gray and your eyes going all wonky, people believed it was a plague. But when, when, when when it was actually Discord turning... Uh, people into the negatives of themselves, which I like to put as good, good and evil. Um, he, uh, the, 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 uh, the good turned evil and then it just went into like a violent chaos and, uh, death, destruction, that sort of thing. Months later, everyone's basically wiped out, uh, from existence and discord, uh, sort of reigned supreme. And it, it was, it was, it was a really, really dark story. <laughs> It was, it, was, it was something I've never actually went about trying to write before. And then after I did that, uh, my friend wanted me to do more dark stories. So, so I... Was a sad ending? Oh, it was such a sad ending. The main character died. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. He my. gets disintegrated. Um, he, uh, wow. uh, he tried, uh, uh, you know, human versus mythical being. There's no way he would win. Um, oh. But uh, I... I, I there's way too much into it, but then uh, when my friend like uh, liked how I, how I did such dark twists and stuff, he wanted me to do more. So I actually uh, uh, went for a new approach, which was um, if if a certain I, if certain something has changed in uh, the My Little Pony series, how greatly it could affect uh, the actual story. Um, uh, like one simple change could end up screwing their, the entire plot over and I made it where Chrysalis actually ends up uh, almost winning the entire uh, the entire battle it was, it, was, it was so grim it was so dark it was out of this world she took over Cantalot the next plan of move was that the Pegasi trying to uh, take back Cantalot it's like if the unicorns lose, then it has to be up to the Pegasi with their aerial uh, attack to get oh. back at it. Uh, and this the seems like ponies sit and watch the drama, like meh. too much. <laughs> exactly how it went is the Peg- the the Pegasi go to war. They actually arm themselves with arm with like spears and that sort of thing, and they they go to attack. But it was actually a suicide mission because what do changelings have that Pegasi don't? Horns. They have magic. Ah, uh, yes. As they fly towards one another, next thing you know, at the distance that the Earth ponies are watching, there's green explosions. And as all the Pegasi are wiped out instantly. Oh, man. Rainbow Dash died in Cantalot, so Fluttershy wanted to be more assertive, and she wanted to actually join this battle, but their friends kept telling her, no, don't. And Luna ended up being the one in charge of this raid. And when she was going, just going to battle in the sky, she looks over and she sees Fluttershy in the battle. And uh, a change in starts going after Fluttershy. Uh, Luna screams, and then it, it's sort of like a movie. It switches over, and uh, and uh, there's all the bodies all in the clouds, all, all on the ground and everywhere. And Twilight wants to go down. And check because she knew Fluttershy went to battle, and she wants to make sure if her friend's alive or not. And it was one of the saddest moments because they see Luna laying on the ground but alive, and they're like, "Have you seen Fluttershy?" And she screams them, "Tell them no, don't go, don't come near me, don't come close to me." And they're like, "Why? What is it?" And uh, with her wings um, sort of surrounding her, she lifts up one of her wings, and there's Fluttershy body right next to hers. Oh my! Like, You've now given us enough of a trailer for this story. <laughs> we want to read it. 
It's it, it's so dark. Um, oh, uh, I, I I want to write one for Sombra. I really do. I, oh, I, I, write for Sombra. So I'll tie it into your first one. It's like Discord's turning everyone to the polar opposite. Yeah, he accidentally uh, messes with Sombra, and Sombra beats the crap out of him. Sombra. Uh, I thought of something for Sombra, which is just even darker because oh. how I want it is since uh, I, this one's gonna be tied in differently from. The, uh, from that one that I wrote. I, I'm making this one where what would happen since Chrysalis is supposedly might still be alive since in, in the show she gets hit by that uh, by the love explosion and flies off into a distant team rocket. Uh, why uh, if, if she's still alive honestly the best means of attack for Chrysalis would to be attack the Crystal Empire oh. they focus on love in order to power that crystal heart. if And how I want to put it is when Cadence is at her weak point, that is the perfect time for a changeling to attack. So I want to write it where the changelings attack, Chrysalis bashes through the door, and she's slowly walking up to Cadence, and Cadence looks up weak and everything from holding up that shield, and... Uh, Chrysalis lowers down her horn, and then there's a sort of a green light that the ponies can see come out of the windows, and next we know they see the shield uh, turn off. Ooh. And then she, Chrysalis manages to get the heart, and she ends up sucking all the love that the, Chrys- that the crystal ponies have put into it, and she becomes the most powerful being in all of Equestria, and she's completely unstoppable. I can't think of an ending yet. I, I just don't know how to mm-hmm. continue it onwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shining armor, we're going to do something. Yeah, it's it's good. Good. Like that, but yeah. it's like, it's like, that's my premises is, is really, if really that would be the smartest thing for a chain to do is to attack the Crystal Empire at its utmost weak point. And I thought maybe having a connection with Sombra and Chrysalis, because honestly, there's a king. Where's the queen? There's a queen. <laughs> ah. Shepard. <laughs> okay, no, screw, screwball. Seriously, um, publish your work because your your work sounds awesome. A lot of people have been saying that, but I just don't know yet. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I, I I think maybe I'll try doing the somber one, and if if I if I do give enough people the insight, maybe I'll release it. But I've been thinking about that one for a while, for quite a while. Mm-hmm. And pretty much ever since the Sombra episode came out, I'm like, I'd love to make a fanfic on him, but I just don't know how to go about it. Um, my way of actually writing these uh, stories is to listen to orchestra music. I'm a huge orchestral fan, and when, I, when I'm listening to music, it gives me ideas. It gives me insight into a, a, sort of like a viewing of a movie. So when I'm listening to an action-packed uh, song, uh, I, I can think up uh, a scene or something just because of listening to that song. And uh, and then that's actually how I came up with these sort of creative ideas. So if I'm listening to a very dark, sad song, I, I that's how I came up with that whole Chris's uh, sort of exploding open that, that door, the main hall door, and then walking in and uh, taking over Cadence. Uh, I, I thought that up from just listening to uh, some some pretty dark music. <laughs> By any chance, was McCon's music part of that playlist? Actually, that one wasn't. That one was actually Hans Zimmer that helped me. That oh, one. wow. <laughs> wow. Hans Zimmer. I, I, I have to say, um, you, you, you sold the trailer to me. Now I really want to read it. You... I want to produce a trailer for that. <laughs> I wish I could just do animating. I love to animate that scene so bad. I just want to make it where using that same Hans Zimmer song that I that I was listening to, make a trailer of, of the change lanes, what you normally would see as crystal ponies. They manage to get through the barrier, and next thing you know, they all start turning into change lanes, a bunch of them, and then they just start a full-fledged attack on the Crystal Empire. They have no means of defense. Literally no means. They don't have the elements of harmony on them. That's their True. number one issue. They don't have. They only have like they're they're they're, they're bone right there and there. There there will be no means of attack. And what I even thought to go even further into this is when Chrysalis takes over, she, in spite of Somber, creates her own shield around the city <laughs> and says, "Get lost. This is mine. Go find something else." And what does? <laughs> 
he turns on Cantralot and mm-hmm. all the rest of Equestria. So they see the they the uh, uh, Luna and Celestia are looking out in the horizon, having a feel that something has went wrong. When next we know, over the mountains there's just this black fog. This this black mist that just goes right over and it just completely consumes everything and that's where Westry is at loss. <laughs> like a blank fault came in like That's not a word. Someone spilled ink on the Cintiq. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I just wish I could animate and do that sort of thing. I love to make that sort of dark trailer. It's what like here's uh, Zachary Rich line. <laughs> yeah, or, or maybe even my friend Galaxy Art or something, but I highly doubt they would make something like that. Hey, you never know. It sounds epic to me, you know. Some people have done the ponification for trailers, so like Inglorious Bastards and what's the other one? Inception and things like that. They've done really, really nice trailers. Yeah, true. But, uh, they do a really good job of that sort of thing. But still, uh, you the, the, the way you describe your story, it's really interesting. <laughs> And I like to see stuff like this happen because it helps to give the depth that a lot of people want to see in this fandom. In the sense that we're not always writing about rainbows and butterflies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of so, anyway, um, I think we've discussed fanfics long enough, so we shall move on. Oh, yes. So, anything to add before we leave, Screwball? Huh, maybe tune in this Monday at 6 p.m. Mountain Time to Steve and my friends. We're going to be interviewing the... I don't know if you guys will have it or have the YouTube ready by then, but if 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 you guys get it uploaded before then, uh, yeah, tune in to Steve and my friends at 6 p.m. Uh, uh, Mountain Time this Monday. We're going to be interviewing Kathy Westluck, which is the voice behind Spike and one of my uh, all-time heroes of the show. I love her so much, and I just cannot wait for this uh, for this interview uh, with Dusty Cat and I. So it's it's gonna be a blast. Ooh, I so be... want to listen in. I wish I could be on. I wish I could be on. I want to ask her to do a shampoo impression. Ah! <laughs> and I believe it is at eight a.m. Malaysia time. Correct. I think so. Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning, eight a.m. I think so. And if not, it'll be on YouTube and iTunes. Yep, definitely. So yep. anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shoutouts. And my shout-out goes to you, Screwball. Thank you for coming on and thank you for sharing your amazing stories. No problem. I had a blast. Yeah, I had a blast listening. Uh, now I'm really interested in reading that fanfic. <laughs> Same here. That's the first time I like heard... Uh narrated trailer for a story. <laughs> See, this marketing right there. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, Dan, do you have any shout-outs to give? Yeah, first of all, to Screwball, thank you very much for joining us and sharing your experience with us. It was really, really something. Thank you so much. And second of all, a happy birthday shout-out to Jisheng Chow, the guy that did the bulk buys for us. When you were still in Malaysia, he led a lot of these um, We Love Fun Bulk Buys. Today is his birthday. Actually, May 5th is his birthday. So yeah, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. So, Screwball, any shout-outs you want to give up? Maybe to a certain superhero? Oh, I... I, <laughs> I, I like to give a shout-out to... <clears throat> James Justice! Yes! And I'd also like to give a shout-out to Dusty for being such an awesome guy. And definitely a shout-out to you, both of you guys. Um, I've been so happy to be on this and on this show, and it was definitely a blast. And, uh, yeah. and I'll, Oh, and one more. I'd also like to give a shout-out to Kathy Westlock for, because of her, I've gotten to My Little Pony, that awesome voice is Spike, and, and, uh, and Kid vs. Cat, and, and so many animes. Uh, thank you for... for being so awesome and I cannot wait to interview you ah. oh yeah I, I can't wait to listen to the interview oh um Screwball uh, I know this is unprofessional of me but if you interview her could you just say that a fan from Malaysia said you're awesome and thank you for the hard work two fans from Malaysia totally do that for both you guys thank <laughs> right. so much thank you so much Screwball anyway moving on if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the show at gmail.com. And if you would like to email me personally, you can reach me at norman at the show.com And Daniel, you can reach him at daniel at the show.com. Yep. You can also reach us on Twitter. 
The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. I am at Norman Sanzo. I'm at Saint Pinky, S T P I N K I E. And Screwball, what about you? You have Twitter, right? Yes, I do. Mine is Screwball underscore S B M F, which is short for Stay Brony, my friends. All right. That's what it stands for. (laughs) (laughs) I thought it was like a football team or something. (laughs) There's a lot of people that never seem to catch on, and I'm like, ah, come on. (laughs) Oh, oh, Derpy Dan. And also, now you can listen to the MBS show on Stitcher Radio as well. Just check it out there. You can get the app for your smartphone. It works on Android and iOS as well. Wow, this is new for me. <laughs> Just got the email. <laughs> okie dokie dokie then. So anyway, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and also like our Facebook page. And like Dan said, Stitcher. Um, links will be provided in the show notes. So I've been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. And I'm Screwball. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.
the toy in question is 5.5 centimeters in size, equivalent to the size of a blind bag figure. Could this, sorry, um, could this be possible? Uh, could this possibly be? Yeah, sorry. Three, two, one. Could this be? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I write this down, guys. I write this down. Oh. No, no, no! It's, it's not your fault. I, I, I wrote. Funny, I, had to laugh. I, I wrote it down, and oh god! Can we put this three and I up one. <laughs> Bloopers! Yay! Three, two, one.